And a very warm welcome to you from a very sunny Johannesburg. Jenny, we've got the sun back again. The rain seems to have abated for a while. How are you doing over? It looks like it's sunny in France as well today. Yes, it is. We had our first rain yesterday, which was fantastic. But um, yeah, another sunny day today. Well, interestingly, the owner of the podcast studio, okay, Gavin, he has got records going back for the last 20 years of the various rainfall. He's like me. We're really like, you know, nerds when it comes to that kind of stuff. And it's been the highest rain call re- recorded since he started looking at the records, not only for November, but also for October. Really? Yeah, in the last 20 years at least. Wow, How mad is that? So, 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 so you just had like floods. I mean, it was that much rainfall. Yeah, and, I mean, you sent me that video of um, somebody who'd recorded um, something at, I think it was Hartley. It looked like it was Hartley's because I've stood in exactly the exactly same spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's on the side of the Arc de Triomphe, the little one there, which we flew our helicopter and like onto. Um, and I was looking at this, and I've I know exactly what that looks like usually when it's been a bit of rain when and sometimes there's nothing coming out of the dam wall. Wow, I have yeah. never seen anything like that before. I was just they wondering had, if it's washed away a lot of the um, the, the hyacinths as well. The, the bad stuff. They, yeah. they, I, I know that they had to open like five of the, how do you pronounce it, sluice gates? Sluice gates, yeah. Yeah, five of them. So it made for wonderful footage, all that water running down. And then, I don't know if you saw yesterday, another SA People contributor sent us video, or it was late last night actually, video from Potchefstroom, mm. where um, the Moira f- River, yeah? <laughs> Moira, it's okay, yeah. you can speak English and Afrikaans okay. now. <laughs> Moira, please, no, yeah. You know what it is that confuses me? Because the mall is not called Moy River Mall, it's called Mall Refia Mall, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why. Anyway, um, the, the, the river, the, the, you know, the, the, the water went over the banks and the, some of the streets in Poch were turned into rivers. And at the university, the soccer field looks like a um, swimming pool. Yeah, like a totally like it's different crazy. lake. And so they sent us some video footage because people were, you know, everybody just, gra- I don't know how so many people had canoes, but um, everybody <laughs> grabbed. Went canoeing down the road. Yes, they went canoeing down the road. And then, um, is it ER24, the emergency mm. services? They were wonderful, apparently. They came in because some people were literally trapped in their homes because the water was up to, yeah. you know, it was waist high um, up to their doors. And um, so ER24 was sort of rescuing people and, and then even took one year 11 learner to school to write her exam, which oh. I don't know if that was good or bad. <laughs> like, I think it's a pretty good excuse to not be able to write your exam because it's flooded. Yeah, but, because um, we're stuck in my house. No, my dog did not eat my homework, which is what <laughs> used to happen to me anyway. Okay, so yeah, um, for everybody though, if it's like really rainy in your area, whether you're in your car or in your home, please just be safe, okay? And, and, and use your, your head. And, um, and you don't and, want to be swept away, hey? No, no. And I mean, this time the government really was in on it from the start. They, they got the safety tips out before mm. the floods came because so often floods come and then afterwards it's, it's too late for those safety tips. But it's also, hang on, it's also, hasn't it also happened down in Kheberge? No, is it Kheberge? Where is it that they um, yeah, had the, the flooding River. as well? I think yeah, it's River. down in the Eastern Cape where they had it and like a whole bunch of people lost their homes and everything, like 11 families or something because they were just too close to the actual river which broke its banks. I see the Vols been doing the same, watching my people on Facebook who have got places down there. Yes, so, so really they opened gates there as well and they also, mm. they issued huge warnings before they even opened one gate saying move your animals if you're a farmer, move yourself if you've got a house close by. And and they pull your boat and, out the water. Yeah, and they, and they opened the gates two at a time over a period of time to try and make it not mm. as bad. Um, but then, Mel, a quirky little thing that happened is is that you know because of all the rain, all the cicadas up in the Kruger at Lataba Rest Camp, um, you know they decide on their own when the conditions are right, and they sort of come sweeping out of the ground where they've been sort of growing yeah. or it could be months it could be years it's it's so unpredictable and 
so many have come out that um, the Kruger National Park had to issue an apology <laughs> for the inconvenience of the insects because they are just so loud. You know, they hum and then it gets amplified and you, you can't even hear yourself think when yeah, there's a lot the of them. Going, sure, that's crazy. Yeah. And they've been having a lot of rain up in the bush and of course that means that you won't see as many animals, which is a sad thing. I know my oh. kids just come back and she told me the birds are coming in though, which is an amazing thing. So where do so, the animals go? They hide. Because of the rain? Yes, because now there's water. They don't have to go down to the watering holes. So they stay where they are. Okay. Okay. So they've got more facilities. Yes. Okay. So um, we are going to be um, towards the end of the show in our usual entertainment slot speaking to somebody very, very special. I can't um, wait. We'll tell you what it's about. Yeah, I know. We've been kind of like promoing the fact that we're going to be um, talking to some people from something which is happening this week, but listen to the end of the show to find out what that is. I must tell you, though, um, to bring entertainment in a little bit up, is that um, I went last week to the final performance of the um, Joburg Philharmonic Orchestra um, mm, and went to Joburg? place confidence. What, yeah, no, it went, went, it was the jo okay. no, it was the Joburg. Um, okay. Because they were launching that night the Mzanzi Philharmonic Orchestra. So um, it was actually very, very interesting. I had a, a long chat with Bongani Temba because, of course, there's been a lot of stuff on social media about, oh, why do we need another Philharmonic Orchestra? We already have. We've got the JPO. We've got the C CTPO. We've got the KZNPO. Um, and he explained what it's all about. So what I'm going to do is actually, um, with your permission, of course, get him to come and chat to us about the state of classical music in South Africa and what is happening and why the Mzanzi uh, Philharmonic is happening. I must tell you, that was absolutely wonderful to watch. Um, I really enjoyed every single second of it. It's been such a long time since I went to, you know, the, the what it used to be, what was it before? The, the, the Philharmonic Orchestra used to play down in town, and now, of course, it's at the Linda Auditorium. But it was fantastic to watch. And it was sold out, hey? I mean, Beautiful. just every single performance was completely sold out. So classics is well and alive. And they've got the most amazing diversity of, like, um, male to female, um, people of color. Um, it, it's just really wonderful. And the ages as well. So it's a truly kind of cohesive unit as well. But we'll get oh, Bongani wonderful. to explain all of that. It was really yeah. so good. I just decided I want to become a piccolo player though. <laughs> or play the cymbals because they just stand there most of the time and eventually they'll do one thing. <laughs> Sitting and watching some of the people on the stage and thinking, what is that person doing there? Are they, are they taking, are they keeping time? Are they taking notes of who made a mistake when and turned out it was a piccolo player? Anyhow, my friend who's a piccolo player is like, well, it's a little bit more hard than that. But anyway, sorry. Lord. Yeah. And when they do make a difference, they make it, you know, when they do make a sound, it's, it's so you, you, crucial. You can't hear it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I have a friend, a very good friend, who's a piccolo player. So I'm actually just winding her up a bit more. Um, <laughs> what can I say? All right. So, what news have you got for expats? Uh, if you're in London, look out on the 22nd of November. President Cyril Ramaphosa is arriving. Um, he was invited by King Charles, um, so I think he'll be going to Buckingham Palace. Is he going to go and take the diamond back? Uh, I don't know, but uh, what I do know is that keep watching SA People because we're going to have something on what some South Africa, well, what a group in England is asking South Africans abroad to do mm -hmm. um, to to basically uh, protest against the Cadre deploy, deploy, deployment, deployment in South deployment, Africa. Yeah. I yeah. agree with that. So okay, so we'll have the details on where to go, what to do in order for Ramaphosa and all the press to notice you in London. And okay, so what are some of our favorite, most famous, shall I say, maybe not favorite, expats doing? Apart from the man who has, you have to pay, what, $8 for a blue check? Whatever that is. I don't know. I, I've on been Twitter. Twitter for such a long time, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so so uh, we've got an article this week that's just a little bit different. Obviously, Elon Musk is in the news every day now, and a lot of it is twisted. I find it much more fun to actually read what he says rather mm -hmm. than the interpretation by some people that are anti him. Um, but, but there's a really good article that we've got, which is about, you know, he's autistic mm -hmm. and, you know, for the, the richest man in the world and one of the most powerful men in the world to, 
to have autism is really interesting to look at the way his mind works that perhaps mm. got him into this position. So, um, so yeah, so there's that article, which is really great. And then something coming up on Sunday, which I'm hoping to go to myself, is the World Rugby Awards, which will be held in Monaco. South Africa's Princess Charlene will be there. Do we say Charlene or Charlene? Charlene. Okay. On the Afrikaans, man. Okay. Yep. So, so Princess Charlene will be there. She's the patron, I think. Mm. And um, and oh, Shane, this year only two South Africans have been nominated. Last year, no. you know, it was like a herd of them. Um, so this year it's Lucanio M um, for for Rugby Player of the Year. So it's yeah. great. And then really exciting Namawetu Mabenge for um, the try that she got yes <laughs> this is quite a better scored, word yeah yeah <laughs> and she scored a try yes yeah. in in spain in august which was a phenomenal try and she's up for try of the year for oh, female rugby players yeah excellent so all and right so we've got local people doing good overseas what have we got with locals doing good here at home well well bringing a lot of pride to South Africa is some locals who are doing well internationally and it just happened now just just before we began recording that uh, Walter Kellerman Walter Kellerman yeah Walter Kellerman um, along with Zakes Bantwini and Nomsebo Zikode Del or Zikode, yeah. Zikode. Uh, I can't read if I've got an explanation on Alde. Um, they have been nominated for a Grammy for um, a song called Bath. Uh, have you got it Bayete. there? Yes. Bayete. Best yes. Global mu Music Performance. Yeah, so it's also, yeah, just popped up. So that's really, really, really cool. And, um, and so you know that it's Kellerman's fourth Grammy nomination. Yep, he's done absolutely brilliant. Of course, he's a flautist or a flutist, as some people prefer to call it. <laughs> Do you know what he prefers to call himself? Flutist, I know, but it's not. No, a flute painter. A flute painter? Yeah, yeah. Which is just so much easier to say. <laughs> so like I'm going with What's flute painter. flautist? Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so that's happening. That will be on the 5th of February in Los Angeles. Um, yes, and, 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 and he just said, um, he just quickly sent a message on Facebook this morning just saying, very exciting to share South African music with the world and I hope to share some beautiful, good energy with this song. So Fantastic. They are doing that. Now, I see um, you've got something here about Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. What about them? Well, anybody down in Cape Town, you know, last week we mentioned about how South Africa is just taking off for international films. People around the world are, are, are spotting South Africa in a movie about America or Poland or whatever. And um, because of the diverse landscapes in South Africa. And so, yeah, Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren are, have apparently been spotted um, down in the Cape with because uh, they are filming. It's like a prequel to that Kevin Costner movie, uh, a TV series, Yellowstone. I haven't seen it. Oh, and it, I think it's called 1923 or something. Oh, I might have to go down and stalk Helen Mirren. I think she's fantastic. She's one of the most sexy 70s Septuarian people ever. Gosh, you know, I know, I know a South African who has just redone her house. So <laughs> really good friends with her. Oh, really? Yeah. I think you'll have to give me those details. And yeah. then, then I can go and stalk all kinds of people. And, and you'll be talking to, we'll be talking to somebody who um, we, I think we might want to be stalking, or men might want to stalk at some stage. It's going to be really great. So, but um, what have we got uh, before? I know we're changing the, the order a little bit. What have you got coming up as the big news story for next week? A fantastic interview with uh, Tina van der Westhuizen, who has become the third South African to get a Michelin star for his restaurant. His, his restaurant, of course, is not in South Africa, um, but but he's he's a South African expat and he just got a Michelin star. Fantastic. So pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, and talking about um, Michelin star chefs and things like that, of course, you've got Ian, <gasps> um, who's done with Ian RSVP. That, yeah. That's a podcast, hey? And no, got, no, 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 no. It's it on Showmax. It's on Showmax itself. Oh, okay. Yes. It's just a podcast. No. But he, he's, chat, he's chatting to one of my favorite people. Yeah. Who had that's... me on her show at one stage, Tani Vita Bazaidenhurt. Really? Yeah. What was yeah. she like? 
Um, are we so talking cute. about Dani Evita yeah, or we're talking yeah, about uh, Peter Dirk? Okay, they're both wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah. But, yeah so, that, no, so, so that's this week, this week. Don't, don't miss that. I think don't that's, miss it. Yeah. Beautiful. And of course, there's something very special coming up this Friday on Showmax for everybody abroad. Hang in there because we're going to be back right after this entertainment section and i love the fact that we can do this in a virtual studio from all over the world i mean as we know jenny's sitting in on in france i'm sitting in johannesburg and kate normington where are you i'm in oranjezicht i'm in oranjezicht in the cape melanie <laughs> is it's, that the kind of voice that you're putting on in in, in tally's baby diaries no it's not um no uh, the kind of voice that i should be putting on if and especially living in oranjezicht should be this so i live in oranjezicht now i moved down from joburg about four months ago and yeah for for better or for worse here i am and is that in real life that you've moved down to cape town yes yes because because now i've just watched the first three episodes of Tally's Joburg Diary, which is so exciting because it's the first time I've ever seen the show at all. And she's done the opposite, the, the Cape Town to Joburg move. So, so is it a big move? Like, do you have to let go of staff and things like that? <laughs> Are you talking about me, Kate? Norton, yes, you, Kate. Uh, yeah, we had to let go of a number of our staff. And we had lots of them. No, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it is, it's a rite of passage. Anybody who says that moving isn't a huge thing, I'm, I think I'm only recovering now. I'm beginning to sort of start enjoying Cape Town, but it, it's huge. You know, moving lock, stock, and barrel. Everybody yeah. That. Did you move down to Cape Town and then get this thing, and then have to come back to Joburg to shoot, or how? How did it all work? I mean, because it's, oh, no. it seems like. You know, it's a whole thing. We shot it in Cape Town. So Tully, you know, they, they, they find themselves in financial difficulties and they have to go back home to mom and dad. But we actually filmed it in, on Bel Air Drive at this glorious house called The Midden. I don't know if you know Bel Air Drive in Cape Town, a sort of Constantia way. And the, the place that we filmed was a, a, called The Cottage. <laughs> it's huge the mansion mansion and we we laughed you know we we thought it was hilarious that we were filming in the cottage part of this huge estate so everything was filmed in cape town that referred to johannesburg so all the the uh, a- actors and actresses who were joburg based had to come down to cape town ironically to film it um, wow well, that so, makes no sense at all. <laughs> but you, ca- you can't tell. You can't tell. In the fa- I'm dying to see it. Where did you see it on Showmax? Is it out already? No, it only comes out on Friday. So, so how have you seen the first three episodes, Dan? Because you? we were sent a special link because of you coming on. Oh, lovely. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. But, but we're not allowed to share it with anybody, Mal. No. No, I haven't shared with many, but don't worry. <laughs> but what I want to, so, so Kate, your character, tell us a bit about your character, because I mean, obviously everybody knows about Tally, okay, and, and yeah. or Suzelle, or whichever name. I mean, she's, been, <laughs> I always think it's quite interesting that you have a, a, somebody who's Greek being Jewish or being Afrikaans. So is your character you? Yes, <laughs> yes, it is, um, largely. Although Michelle is far more sort of premeditated than I am. I'm away with the fairies, Melanie. I'm sort of on a good day. I'm sort of, I've got both feet planted firmly in the air. But I, <laughs> um, you know, I, I like to think my heart is in the right place. But Michelle is, um, as Tully's mother, she's, she, she's incredibly self-serving, self-involved. She's a narcissist, t- textbook. But she's also quite sweet because she's quite ditzy. But it all revolves around uh, maintaining Um, a sort of youthful glow and she cannot look at herself in the mirror and let that go. She would rather, um, you know, her youth is, is the most important thing. And she's self deluded. She is completely in this next season. (laughs) Hang on a second. It's embarrassing. I just need to say (laughs) something right now. I mean, I'm looking at you and I'm just thinking there's no ways anybody's ever going to believe that you could be Tully's mother. 
know in some of the sequences in this season you're going to very clearly see that she is an age she's an aging ingenue and she cannot let go of her youth which i suppose is pretty reflective of, <laughs> of all of us yeah <laughs> we're all doing the same thing <laughs> yeah but it's quite funny to sort of indulge that um that idea because of course you know as women we we don't want to lose our identities or you know perhaps how we perceived ourselves partly in our lives so it's it's painful to let go of that part of you and i think michelle is no exception in fact she's the poster girl for it in in tully's uh, jobo diaries and the daughter i mean julia is i mean julia is a shapeshifter after tully i don't know what she's going to tackle but she can do so much um and and you know all the characters in tully are terribly self-serving self-involved but it's hilarious it has hilarious consequences and that's what people love to watch <laughs> and 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 as a south african abroad is is it very reflective of many south africans do you think what the series the the like you say you know the characters are quite narcissistic and everything you know is self involved yes self involved i i think i i i was remember hearing overhearing a, a, an australian student one night when i was living in in london i was taking a night bus home to um uh god where was i living turnpike lane sort of around that area and i was getting a night bus home and i just remember hearing this australian saying oh and the south africans they all think they're little jam tarts <laughs> 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 turn around and say you're not wrong there. <laughs> and I thought, okay, this is how we're being perceived out there. You know, we're sort of quite precious. You know, we live the, these rarefied lives. Not all of us, of course, but um, you know. And, and the the opposite side of that is that South Africans are incredibly hardworking, and and ironically don't have uh, delusions about themselves. you know they may have grown up in an entitled environment but they're all sort of pretty hard working um yeah that's that's true on one level anyway so yeah I'm, I'm i think i off. think as a south african abroad and this is the wonderful thing about tally's all all of them the the baby diary um trober diary and wedding diary is that they are available for south africans abroad to watch and it is such a fantastic way of of hooking back in and um and identifying oh yeah and just loving you know the accents and 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 the different typical accents um you see them with the parents at the school and and all that it's um it it's wonderful it's it's like you know every time we were getting those links it was like getting a christmas present you know because it's an extreme do you agree melody it's like a sort of an extreme <clears throat> version of us all you know it's this hyperbolic you know I but there is that yeah. hang on there is that that vision and even I have it of those those sort of northern suburbs mummies who go in lunch at you know Hyde Park and I mean they, they you know it, it's almost like um I've been watching um some some English stuff as well <laughs> and you sit there and these upper class people and you just look at them and you know that whole saying about the unspeakable in cha- in, in full pursuit of the unedible inedible which is talking <laughs> about the upper class fox hunting <laughs> and I kind of think of the majority of the northern cl- uh, suburbs mummies or the southern suburbs mummies in Cape Town obviously as being like that and they are they are of an ilk they especially in Cape Town they kind of look the same as well I was wondering yeah. do they have all got the same plastic surgeon <laughs> well i actually have a johannesburg friend who i dearly love but she reminds me a lot of tally because she's now having to move to cape town and is literally in tears that they will have to downsize that they won't be able to have as many staff and it's just so <laughs> alien but i know it's normal in in her circle and it's very humorous from the outside you know yeah. and as 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 awful as it is um it, it, it you know it it's a type it's it's definitely a type and and we all sort of espouse those 
those characteristics to, to larger or <laughs> smaller degrees, you know, and to sort of yeah. imagine that we don't, I think is sort of delusional, but we are a type. You know. yeah. And mm -hmm. and speaking Australian earlier, have you ever seen Kath and Kim? <laughs> yes. This reminded me a lot of Kath and Kim because Kath and Kim are also the extreme uh, kind of suburb Melbourne suburbs um, yeah. characters, you know, and that same humor that's just laughing at themselves in their well, in their taking don't. themselves that's seriously. The thing about Kath and Kim, they don't laugh at themselves. They're too. Um, oh, sorry, I meant the Australians laughing at themselves. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, when I they try and say Chardonnay and they say Cardonnay, you know, that they, they're trying so hard to be posh and they just miss it. <laughs> and 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 um, Kate, have you done any international roles? Because when I told people I was interviewing you today, all my foreign friends here were like, "Have we seen her in anything? Um, have they?" <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no. I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm. A, as I said earlier, I'm an aging ingenue going to seed. But I, I worked <laughs> for about five years and came back and. Um, and now having to be in Cape Town and sort of find my way around here, it's pretty tough reinventing yourself. You don't stop and you've got to prove yourself on, a, mm. on an ongoing basis. So when you say an international sort of role, I, I don't quite know. I, I worked in London for about five years, so I don't know if that is included in, in those accolades. <laughs> it is international and they're making more and more international films down in Cape Town. So. You never know. Oh, put in a good word for me, Melanie. Well, I'll put in a, bit, a good word for both of us. How's that? And then I'll come down to Cape Town and come and hang out with you for a bit. And why not? You know, it'd be quite fun. Okay, and so, Kate, oh, can I ask quickly, yeah. just as my own curiosity, is I believe that Julia's sister is in this season. Yes. Oh, the, what the is the loveliest she? girl, um, Stephanie. Um, she plays Michaela. And I just love saying that that name, Michaela. <laughs> Michaela, it just, it's just got an amazing ring to it. In fact, if ever I'd had a daughter, I would have called her Michaela. And um, Stephanie is just divine. Yeah, she she plays uh, Julia's sister, Tully's sister, Michaela. And um, she actually owns um, a, a, a kind of deli place on Arthur. Stephanie, her sister, owns a deli place in Cape Town that is absolutely divine. And she in real life. Things. In real life. Makes the most <laughs> incredible I'm having problems food. keeping up with who's who at the moment and what you're doing. <laughs> who, who is real and who's not? <laughs> Sorry, well, really, though. Real. <laughs> really, what, what is in the plan? What, what's in the pipeline for you? Um, I've, done, I've, been, I've sent in about, I'd say, 30 self-tapes since I've been in Cape Town with not one response. So this is... This is the downside of being a freelance performer. Mm. Um, but but Tally's diary will, uh, Joe Diary will surely people. And the I fact that I just want you. I just want <laughs> you. One actor for best supporting actress in Tally. But awards are the, the kiss of death. You know, they're oh, really know. great, but they don't pay the rent. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Absolutely. I never won one, but there was also not here all there. Anyhow. <laughs> right. Okay. So Tally's, Tally's Joburg Diaries will be able to be seen from this Friday, which is what date is? I don't even know what 18th. date is today. The 18th of November on Showmax. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's available on Showmax International as well for subscribers around the world um, who unfortunately do not include America because of licensing laws. There we go. So you're going to be worldwide, Kate Normington, and, and we look forward to it. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Kate, thank you so much for joining us. It's lovely to see I you. I made some sense, guys. So, you know, and you can edit out all the sort of protracted <clears throat> silences and you know, whatever Honey, else. Honey, we're all blonde. It's all allowable. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, and Jenny, always, as always, lovely to catch up with you. And, um, of course, if you want to share your good news stories or find out more about what South Africans here or abroad are doing, get along to the sapeople.com website or, of course, on Facebook. And don't forget, tell your friends. Make them share.
sharing is caring. And we, of course, as South Africans, even if we are northern suburbs mummies, are very caring people. Thanks very much, guys. We'll catch up with you again soon. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Bye.